Well, it's been another day of military action across um, the border, back and forth between Israel and Hezbollah, um, while and before these, these strikes um, on Iran by Israel were ongoing. So you have the Israeli military reporting that Hezbollah's filed, uh, Hezbollah has fired some 80 projectiles across the border into Israel. Hezbollah acknowledges firing salvos of rocket communities uh, there in the north of Israel. Meanwhile, early this morning, Israel says it carried out some controlled explosions on what it says were Hezbollah weapons caches in village in southern Lebanon. And that set off huge explosions there, which actually triggered some earthquake monitors inside Israel, who, which erroneously recorded that as an earthquake. But it was, in fact, that the size of those explosions there in southern Israel. So that um, very much continuing on going here. Um, in terms of reaction to uh, Israel's strikes uh, on Iran, Lebanon's Ministry of Foreign Affairs condemned that uh, early morning round of airstrikes by Israel, saying that it was a violation of Iran's sovereignty and saying that it was a serious threat again to regional peace and security. And they've once again called for the UN Security Council to step in and try and end this conflict, of course, with Israeli troops on the ground inside southern Israel and carrying out daily and nightly raids uh, against targets in Lebanon, which they say are Hezbollah targets. And following those Israeli strikes, how are the, you know, the Lebanese people reacting and coping? I think, you know, this we knew that this is, uh, Israeli reaction to Iran was coming. It was just a question of when. And clearly people in Lebanon from all uh, walks of life, from all across the political spectrum, from all communities were bracing themselves for that. And now they're bracing themselves for any future potential fallout. Well, of course, they've got an ongoing conflict in their country, which has going, been going on, I mean, not only fire, firing back and across the border um, for the past year, but now actually a ground offensive, which has been going on for, well, four weeks now. We've seen a huge um, influx of refugees from the south, from the Bekaa Valley, from other areas where people feel they're at danger. And so, you know, that is putting a strain on Lebanese society in terms of the healthcare system, in terms of humanitarian aid, and even um, it's aggravating some perhaps pre-existing tensions in communities and the very delicate balance of communities living here together with this huge influx of people, mainly from the sheer south of the country. A lot of people here are very, very tired of conflict and want to try and improve the situation in their country and get peace and stability at long last. Because, of course, after decades of civil war in the 1980s and then political instability, a financial crisis, that huge port explosion in 2020, and now this war flaring up again, uh, people have had enough and are very, very tired and want to kind of see a, a, a more uh, safer and peaceful balance in their country that's sustainable.